As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. I've been sitting right here waiting for this moment so we could dive back into Jude verse 20. And today we're going to see what the Bible means when it says we need to pray in the Holy Ghost and what are the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. But if you need prayer, reach out to us right now. Just give us a call or send us an email. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to believe for Jesus to step right into your situation to do whatever it is that needs to be done and he'll do it. He said, if two of you will agree as touching anything, I'll do it. We'll get into agreement with you and Jesus really will do whatever needs to be done. But call us right now or send us an email so we can release our faith with you and we will really, really pray. And remember that this week we're offering you my brand new series called How to Build Up Your Most Holy Faith. The subtitle says, Praying in the Spirit, Building Your Faith, and Becoming an Instrument in the Hands of God. And it comes with a study guide. And we're offering you this week again my book, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. The foreword is by Perry Stone. The subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. This is a book that you need to read, and you ought to buy a couple, because this is definitely a book you're going to want to share with somebody else. But hey, read for your Bible, and let's return to Jude verse 20. The wonderful book of Jude that most people just skip right over because they just see it as the little bitty book before the book of Revelation. But my friends, the book of Jude is powerful. And this week we're concluding four weeks of teaching on the 25 verses in the book of Jude. And you know, it is just jam packed. And every day I've been also giving you the RIV of every single verse in the book of Jude. But let's go back to Jude verse 20 and review what we covered yesterday. Then we're going to move on to what it means to pray in the Holy Ghost. But in Jude verse 20, Jude writes and says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, then he adds, praying in the Holy Ghost. But we saw yesterday that he begins this verse in the King James Version with the word but, which is the Greek word day, a conjunction, which here is intended to draw a comparison. Before this, he's been talking about people that became apostate in their faith. They veered from the truth. They wandered into deception. Now he says, but on the other hand, you brothers, he's telling us we don't have to lose our mind just because everybody else does. He says, but ye beloved. He calls them beloved, the Greek word agapatoi, which describes something that you love so much, something that draws such awe out of your heart that it nearly leaves you speechless. And this is the word which Jude uses to describe fellow believers. It's exactly what we should feel toward fellow believers and toward the people who attend our church when we see them. Rather than just see them as a friend or see them as somebody who attends our church, we need to see them as somebody that's been touched by the agape love of God and their lives have been totally transformed. And when you compare who they are now to who they used to be, it should draw awe and wonder out of your heart. You should want to call them beloved. And that's what now Jude calls his readers. He says, but you beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Let's be, review those words building yourselves on. It is a triple compound in Greek, the word epi, which means on top of something. The word oikos, which is the Greek word for a house. And the word demeo, which means to construct something. But when you compound the three words together, it means the enlarging of a house as well as all that's entailed in the building process to increase the size of a house or a building and here it pictures one who proceeds with a plan. Hence, this word depicts a deliberate decision to build on top of a foundation that's already laid with a well thought out plan. Thus, intentionality is inferred. 
And here Jude says, my friends, a great foundation of the faith has been laid under you. Now build your life on top of it. And notice he calls it your most holy faith. And in Greek, it has a definite article, which means this is not talking about my personal faith for miracles or my faith for finances or my faith for healing, but it's a definite article, the faith. This is the faith. It is the teaching of scripture. It is the doctrine. It is the Bible. He says the Bible is a solidly fixed foundation underneath your life that is immovable. It is unshakable. And you have to remember that the reason Jude wrote his epistle is because the faith was under assault by men who were insidiously trying to alter and modify the grace of God into a teaching that said everything is okay. And Jude wrote to us and said, earnestly contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to us, guard it, protect it, and pass it to others in the same pure form that it was given to you with no alterations and no modifications by those with ulterior motives. And now he says in verse 20, that faith under you, the most holy faith is something you can build your life on top of. That's what he says in verse 20. And the RIV of this part of verse 20 would be like this. On the other hand, beloved, I call you that because it's the only word I know how to express how deeply I love and cherish you. Listen, you must intentionally do all you can to focus on building and further expanding your spiritual lives on top of the foundation of your most holy faith. And yesterday, we covered very important foundational truths in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And I recommended that you get my book called Build Your Foundation. You need to know those foundational doctrines that really are the foundation of our most holy faith. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, laying on of hands, the doctrines of baptisms, eternal judgment, resurrection from the dead. These are the tenets of our faith that are non-negotiable. And my friends, if you know those, you can really build your life on top of them. But then Jude goes on in verse 20 and says, praying in the Holy Ghost. The word praying is the Greek word pros eukomai. The word pros means to draw near. It carries the idea of intimacy or closeness. The word eukomai means to pray or to offer a petition. But when you compound the two words together, it means to come near in order to offer a request. And it tells us that prayer is a moment when we draw near. And in the act of prayer, we're offering ourselves to God. We're making requests to God. But notice he also says praying in, in the Holy Ghost. And the word in in Greek is the word in, and it's pronounced in. It means inside, located inside, and gives the impression of one who is praying in the realm and in the control of the Holy Ghost. And this leads me in my thinking to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, where the Apostle Paul talks about praying in the Holy Ghost. And listen to what he says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He that speaks in an unknown tongue, that's praying in the Holy Ghost, what does he do? He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Here is one of the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. That word edify is an architectural term meaning to enlarge, to amplify a house. It depicts the careful following of an architectural plan to enlarge, to increase, or to amplify a structure thus to edify. It even means to improve or to leave in an improved condition. And here is what we find. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, we expand our spiritual capacity. We edify ourselves. Maybe you begin with one capacity, but when you pray in tongues, you begin to expand your spiritual capacity to receive more and more and more and more. It's like a family who lives in a house and they're content to live in that house. But finally they realize, hey, we need more room. So what do they do? They begin to push the walls out 
they begin to amplify their house to make more space for their living. Now Paul says, when we pray in the Spirit, or when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we literally begin to push out our spiritual walls so that our spiritual interior becomes bigger and we can receive more and more and more and more. And I believe this is the reason why the Apostle Paul wrote the majority of the New Testament. He had more revelation than anybody else. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he stated, I pray in tongues more than you all. He prayed in tongues until he expanded his spiritual interiors. He pushed those walls out again and again and again and again, making room for more revelation until finally, spiritually, internally, he could hold a lot. And in the same way, when you pray in tongues, you amplify yourself, you expand yourself so you can hold more power and more divine revelation. That is one of the benefits of praying in tongues. And I'll just have to tell you that if I'm in a spot where I really need insight from the Lord or revelation, I stop what I'm doing and I pray in tongues because I know that when I pray in tongues, not only does it cause me to draw near, but it causes my spiritual capacity to be increased to receive whatever I need to have from the Lord. And this is one of the benefits of praying in tongues. And I want to tell you that I have an entire series which is called The Infilling of the Holy Spirit. What it is, what it produces, how to receive it, and how to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. This is a remarkable series. And if you don't already have it, you should order it. I cover two works of grace for every believer. The New Testament pattern of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Or how about this? Tongues. What is it really all about? Lesson number four, the benefits of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And lesson number five, the supernatural role of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the reason I recommend this series is because I want you to enter into all the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. But wait, there's one more benefit. In addition to expanding you spiritually, praying in tongues does something else. But first, let me give you the RIV of verse 20. On the other hand, beloved, I call you that because it's the only word I know to express how deeply I love and cherish you. You must intentionally do all you can to focus on building and further expanding your spiritual lives on top of the foundation of your most holy faith. And here we have the Greek word prosyukomai translated into this verse. And be constantly drawing near. The word pros means to draw near, to be intimate in order to offer a petition prosyukomai. And be constantly drawing near as you pray in, the little Greek word in, which means in the control of or in the realm of, as you pray in the realm and in the control of the Holy Spirit. Then you come to verse 21, which is a continuation of verse 20. And in fact, when you come to the end of verse 20 in the Greek text, there is a comma, which means he's not finished yet. He is going to continue describing the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. And now we come to verse 21 where we find the next benefit. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And now we find that when we pray in the Holy Ghost, it helps us to stay in the love of God. First of all, it expands our spiritual capacity that's exactly what this verse says. It also helps us to build on top of our most holy faith. But now in verse 21, we find that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it helps to keep you in the love of God. And the word keep here is a form of the Greek word tereo. And I want to translate for you what this word tereo means. It depicts the uninterrupted vigilance of soldiers who were positioned to protect something of great importance, or it was used to depict the uninterrupted vigilance of shepherds who were charged to watch over sheep assigned to their care, or it depicted those who were charged to stand guard and who knew they were to be faithful and remain committed to their charge regardless of assaults or the numbers of attackers they might encounter. And here we find that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it helps you to guard what has been placed inside you. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, 
You're building perimeters around that divine deposit that God has placed inside you. Do you see how important it is to pray in the Holy Ghost? But wait, it says to keep yourself in the love of God. The word in again is the Greek word in. And here, this little preposition means in, inside, located inside, and gives the impression that praying in the realm and control of the Holy Ghost helps us to be kept inside the love of God. So my friends, if you want to be in the love of God, walk in the love of God, and demonstrate the love of God toward others, then you need to be praying in the Holy Ghost because praying in the Holy Ghost keeps you, and it doesn't just keep you and guard you and protect you, it keeps you in the wonderful love of God, the indescribable, inexpressible love of God. And then he adds, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Looking for the Greek word pros dekomai. Ah. The word pros, again, carries the idea of drawing near, coming close. The word dekomai means to take something very readily. But when you compound the two words together, it describes a hope or an expectation or, listen to this, one so expectant that he's ready to embrace to gladly welcome and to fully and completely take hold of something without reservation or hesitation. So now Jude says, when you pray in tongues, it enables you to fully and completely take hold of something without reservation, without hesitation. And what is it that it enables you to take hold of? This verse says, the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the word mercy the Greek word elios, which can be translated pity. That's a fine translation. It can be translated compassion. That's a very good translation. But here it's translated as the word mercy. It's not just pity that says, oh, that's just so pitiful. Oh, that just breaks my heart. Feeling those kinds of pity doesn't change anybody's situation. Here it is the word elios. Rather than translated pity, it is mercy. It is a compassion that is driven to do something to rectify a situation. It doesn't just stand by and wring its hands and say, oh, that's so sad, that's so pitiful. It is a compassion that says, I've got to do something to change that person's situation. It is a mercy that is compelled to act on someone's behalf. And now we find that when we pray in the Holy Ghost, it expands our spiritual capacity. It keeps us. It protects us. It builds a hedge of protection around us. It keeps us in the indescribable, inexpressible love of God that we need for ourselves and in order to walk in love with others. And it enables us by faith to reach out without hesitation to lay hold of the mercy of God that is standing by and is ready right now to reach out and to rectify whatever it is that we're dealing with. And when you pray in tongues, it enables you by faith to reach out and apprehend that mercy, that mercy which God wants to extend toward me and toward you. And it says, the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The word unto, the Greek word ice, it carries the idea of progression. This mercy of God's working in your life right now. It's going to work in your life all the way unto eternal life. And eternal life here means life without end, life everlasting, life that is eternal or eternal life. This is so powerful. And I want to give to you the RIV of verse 20 and verse 21. And here is the RIV of Jude verse 20. On the other hand, beloved, remember, he's comparing them to those that have become apostate. Rather than them becoming apostate in their faith, he believes something better for them. He's believing something better for you. On the other hand, beloved, I call you that because it's the only word I know how to express how deeply I love and cherish you. You must intentionally do all you can to focus on building and further expanding your spiritual life on top of the foundation of your most holy faith. My friends, your faith is most holy and it's a foundation you can build your life on top of. And then he adds, and be constantly drawing near, there's the Greek word, prosukomai, 
Be constantly drawing near as you pray in the realm and in the control of the Holy Spirit. Then he adds in verse 20, here's the RIV. And as you pray in the Holy Spirit, vigilantly keep yourself in the inexpressible, indescribable, unspeakable love of God and be reaching out to embrace and lay a hold of the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that extends even unto the vast expanse of all eternity. Now that is amazing. So in Jude verse 20, the King James Version says, But ye beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But my friends, we find in that verse there is so much. First of all, we're to build our lives on top of the Scripture, on top of the Word of God, and not veer from it. But not only are we to intellectually build our life on top of it, but spiritually we're to pray in the Holy Ghost. And when we pray in the Holy Ghost, all kinds of things begin to take place. First of all, it protects us and it keeps us. It keeps us rooted in the indescribable, inexpressible, unspeakable love of God. And when we pray in the Holy Ghost, it enables us by faith to reach out and apprehend the mercy of the Lord that we need. All of those are benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. The Bible commands us to build up our most holy faith and to pray in the Holy Spirit. But how do you build up your most holy faith? What does that mean? And how do you pray in the Holy Spirit? And what does praying in the Spirit mean for you? In this five-part series, How to Build Up Your Most Holy Faith, Rick Renner dives deep into the book of Jude to answer these important questions. You'll be thrilled to discover what it really means to build up your most holy faith and to pray in the Holy Ghost. You'll also learn how compassion can make a difference for someone who is in trouble, and how Jesus is the great keeper and protector of those who trust in Him. Available in digital or physical format starting at just $10, this series will show you how to reach inside yourself to stir up the fire of God that is in you. In addition, you can also get the book Last Day Survival Guide for $25. This is a book God will use again and again to equip you to successfully sail through the turbulent waters we are facing all around us in the world today. If you believe we are living in the last days, then you need to know how to survive them and thrive in them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series, How to Build Up Your Most Holy Faith, and the book, Last Day Survival Guide. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey, this is Rick Renner. This is where I sit every morning, where I meet with the Lord and I pray for our TV family, our partners, people that I love all over the world. And this is where I prepare my TV programs. I sit down with my Greek study helps. And by the way, I don't just use Greek study helps. I read New Testament Greek. That's what I studied in the university. It really is my specialization. But before I give them to you, first I check them. I make sure I've got it right study all these programs, really put it all together. And I have to tell you that preparing the program is the biggest part. Filming the program is the easy part. It takes hours and hours and hours to make sure I put everything together correctly for you. And then from here, it goes to the TV suite where I sit down with my producer, and then he and I go over all the introductions that I have filmed. Where the word of the king is, there, let God's word release its power in your life today. And I'll see you in the next program. Wow, done with another program. So good to do these programs for the people who watch us all over the world. This is our studio. This really is where I live my life. And in this room, we prepare programs that ultimately go to multiple languages all over the face of the earth. They're primarily Russian and English. Wow, what a blessing. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, Verse 21, that the lips of the righteous feed many. It's my prayer that our teaching is feeding and nourishing many people. But when we're finished with my part, then the programs go into the edit suite, and that's what takes place in this room. And in this room, you can see there's people doing all kinds of things. 
They take the Greek words that I prepare. By the way, it takes a long time to prepare all those Greek words. But then they have to put them on the screen. They have to adjust the sound, adjust the color. They edit the whole program together with the music, the advertisements, the prayer, everything. And we create a teaching program for you. And our goal is to bring teaching that you can trust. That's our goal. That's my prayer. And I want to say thank you to you for helping all of us do it. It's not just me and Denise. There's a whole team here together. We're all committed to bringing good teaching to people. And your part's very important. So thank you for being a partner. Thank you for praying for us. And thank you for giving. Well, today we've been looking at the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost, and I want to remind you that I mentioned that I have a series called The Infilling of the Holy Spirit. Go to our website and look it up. You need to order it so you understand every glorious benefit that belongs to those that are filled with the Holy Spirit. But we're also offering you my series, which is called How to Build Up Your Most Holy Faith. The subtitle says, Praying in the Spirit, building your faith and becoming an instrument in the hands of God. That's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. But order yours today. It comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you my book, which is called Last Days Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. Go online or give us a call right now to order all of these materials. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, and my friend, if you're already a partner, thank you. And if you want to become a partner, you'll change somebody's life. A partner is someone who regularly gives to our ministry to help us take the teaching of the Word of God around the planet. And the moment you become a partner with our family, we're going to send you two books, my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to partners, and Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness, we always send these two books to anyone who joins our partner family. So we welcome you. Please become a partner today. And please remember that we want to pray with you. So call us or send us an email and we'll release our faith for God to work in your life. But Father, we thank you for the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. And by the way, if you've never been filled with the Spirit, call us right now. We'll pray with you so you can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.